the people being cheered so enthusiastically are refugees. They've lost everything, have no home, no country. Some have lost a sense of worth. The welcome afforded these people today in Frankfurt says all is not lost. You have friends. A couple of hundred miles away in Munich, the 12.15 train from Vienna has pulled in. And the welcome is just as warm. More visitors dependent on the kindness of strangers. Finally on German soil is the Lazkani family. Meet Ahmed, a schoolmaster. His wife Radia, a mathematics professor, and their four children. They're from the city of Idlib in Syria. But in March, Islamists from a group linked to Al-Qaeda took it over, and the family have been on the run ever since. For me, there's peace here, he says. In my homeland, there's war, and it's getting worse. We just can't live there. This is the historic part of Munich, where Hitler gave some of his first speeches. Some Germans say their embrace of the refugees is partly motivated by a collective guilt over the past. But this country also has a low birth rate and an aging population. It needs workers. Many of Syria's refugees are from the educated middle classes. We came across a Bavarian cycling club enjoying an afternoon coffee. They welcome the refugees, but... It's necessary to have immigrants, it's necessary to have workers, to have good educated people in Germany, but uh, 800,000 a year is too much. I also think it's important for them that they are willing to be integrated. It's too much mom in the moment. The Lord Mayor of Munich told me he understands people's concerns. But the pressure on schools, on local facilities, on yeah. hospitals, you can cope. Yes, we can. <laughs> As said a promise man. I'm certain we can cope, for now, he says. But more broadly, the EU and Europe must play its part. A common solution needs to be found. At the moment, it's Germany doing the heavy lifting. But for how much longer will it want to maintain that role? <laughs>